Welcome to our latest video on the topic of aldehydes and ketones. This video will discuss oxidation and reduction reactions and is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should understand that aldehydes can be oxidized to form carboxylic acids, while ketones are resistant to oxidation. You should also be aware that aldehydes can be reduced to form primary alcohols and ketones can be reduced to form secondary alcohols. And finally, you should be able to name oxidizing and reducing agents and be able to draw the structural formulae of the products that form in these reactions. Now, in our previous videos, we've discussed the fact that aldehydes and ketones are a series of compounds that contain the C double bond O group or a carbonyl group. And in aldehydes, the carbon atom of this group is joined to at least one hydrogen atom. And the general formula of an aldehyde is R, C double bond O, H. And R is a shorthand for an alkyl group, such as a methyl group, a CH3 group. And three examples of aldehydes are shown on this slide. We have ethanol, which has a CH3 group attached to a C double bond O, H. Propanal, which has a CH3 and a CH2 attached to a C double bond O H, and butanal, which has a CH3 attached to a CH2 attached to a CH2 attached to a C double bond O H. Now, all three of these compounds are aldehydes because they contain an alkyl group attached to a C double bond O and a H. Now, in ketones, the carbonyl group is joined to two other carbon atoms. So the simplest ketone must contain at least three carbon atoms. Now the general formula of a ketone is R, C double bond O, R. And R is once again shorthand for an alkyl group, such as a CH3 group, a methyl group. Now two examples of ketones are drawn here. Propanone has a CH3 attached to a C double bond O and a CH3, and butanone has a CH3 attached to a C double bond O and then CH2, CH3. Now you'll notice that the alkyl groups attached to the C double bond O can be the same in the case of propanone or they can be different in the case of butanone. Now in this video we're going to look at reactions of aldehydes and ketones and the first reaction that we're going to look at only applies to aldehydes and this is oxidation because ketones cannot be oxidized. However, aldehydes can be oxidized to carboxylic acids. Now, to oxidize an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, you reflux the aldehyde with excess acidified potassium dichromate solution. And the potassium dichromate solution is acidified with dilute sulfuric acid. Now, an example of this is ethanol, an aldehyde, being oxidized to the carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid. And in this equation, the oxidizing agent is represented with an O in square brackets. Now, when acidified potassium dichromate oxidizes any substance, it changes from orange to green. And this is because the dichromate ion, Cr2072- minus, is reduced to the chromium ion, CR3 plus and the dichromate ion is responsible for the orange color in potassium dichromate and when it changes to green you have the CR3 plus ion forming. Now the oxidation state of chromium in potassium dichromate is plus six and the chromium in potassium dichromate gets reduced from plus six to plus three and it gets reduced because it gains electrons and it gains these electrons from the aldehyde that's oxidized because when oxidation takes place a loss of electrons happens so the aldehyde loses electrons and these electrons are picked up by the chromium in potassium dichromate and the chromium is reduced from plus six to plus three and the result is a color change from orange to green whenever potassium dichromate oxidizes something you always get a color change from orange to green. Now the alternative to using acidified potassium dichromate is to use acidified potassium permanganate, potassium manganate 7, KMNO4. 
Now, this is a much more powerful oxidizing agent, but it will still convert an aldehyde to a carboxylic acid, but very often the milder potassium dichromate is preferred. Now, the color change for potassium permanganate when it oxidizes a substance is that it goes from purple to colorless. Now, the second type of reaction we're going to look at in this video is reduction and both aldehydes and ketones can be reduced to form alcohols. Reduction is a term used to describe a gain of hydrogen, a gain of electrons, and a loss of oxygen. Now, when an aldehyde gains hydrogen, it turns to a primary alcohol. And if we look at our general formula of an aldehyde, you can see that we have one R group, one alkyl group. And when we reduce this aldehyde, it turns to an alcohol with one R group, with one alkyl group. And that's why it's classed as a primary alcohol. So when you reduce an aldehyde, you get a primary alcohol. And if we look at this slide, you can see ethanol can be reduced to ethanol. Now, if you look at the structure of ethanol compared to ethanol, you can see that ethanol has two extra hydrogen atoms. It contains a hydrogen next to the oxygen and another hydrogen on the same carbon next to the oxygen. So there's been a gain of hydrogen here as ethanol has changed to ethanol. Now when reducing an aldehyde or a ketone, we cannot use hydrogen gas. Now this is because aldehydes and ketones react with nucleophiles and we need a nucleophilic form of hydrogen. So the reducing agents we use are a nucleophilic form of hydrogen. And there are two reducing agents you need to learn for the exam. The first is sodium borohydride, NaBH4. And this reducing agent works in water in aqueous solutions. Now, the second reducing agent you need to learn that we could use here is lithium aluminium hydride, LiAlH4. Now, this is a much more powerful reducing agent. And lithium aluminium hydride is used in dry ether. You can't use water with lithium aluminium hydride because it's so powerful, it will reduce the H plus ions in water to hydrogen gas. So sodium borohydride is carried out in water as a reducing agent, and lithium aluminium hydride works with dry ether, a non-aqueous solvent. Now, if we reduce a ketone with these same reducing agents, sodium borohydride in water, or the more powerful lithium aluminium hydride in dry ether, we will end up with a secondary alcohol. And an example here is propanone, which is reduced to propan propanol. Now, a ketone contains two R groups, two alkyl groups, and therefore, the product of reduction contains two alkyl groups. And that's why a secondary alcohol is formed with a ketone when you reduce it. Now, if you look closely at this example here, propanone being reduced to propantool, you can see that propantool contains two additional hydrogens. There is now a hydrogen next to the oxygen to form an OH. And on the same carbon that the OH is joined, there is an additional hydrogen. And that's what's happened when propanone has changed to propantool. The molecule has been reduced. It's gained hydrogen. So now let's test your understanding of oxidation and reduction with some practice questions. So here is our first practice question. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So question one is asking you to draw the full structural formula of the products formed when the following aldehydes are refluxed with acidified potassium dichromate solution. Now, potassium dichromate is an oxidizing agent. So these aldehydes will oxidize 
two carboxylic acids. Now propanol has three carbons in it and is an aldehyde and that will oxidize to a carboxylic acid with three carbons in and that carboxylic acid is propanoic acid and propanoic acid is drawn here it has a CH3 attached to a CH2 attached to a COOH. Now carboxylic acids have a COOH functional group. Now for question 1b we have butanol and that's oxidized to the carboxylic acid butanoic acid and butanoic acid has a CH3 group attached to a CH2 attached to another CH2 attached to a COOH. So here's our second practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. Now question two is asking you to draw the full structural formula of the alcohols produced from the reduction of butanol, pentanthrione, and butanone. Now butanol is an aldehyde that contains four carbons. So therefore, when you reduce an aldehyde, you will get a primary alcohol. So the primary alcohol will have four carbons in its structure and will be butanol. Now for question 2b, you're asked to draw the full structure formula of the compound you get when you reduce pentanthrione. Now pentanthrione is a ketone, so if you reduce it, you'll get a secondary alcohol. The ketone contains five carbons, so your secondary alcohol will contain five carbons. And because the C double bond O in pentanthrione is on carbon three, the OH group in the secondary alcohol will be on carbon three. So my secondary alcohol is pentanthriol, and pentanthriol has a CH3 attached to a CH2, and then we have our C bonded to the OH and a H, and then CH2, CH3. Now for question 2c, you're asked to draw the full structural formula of the alcohol produced when you reduce butanone. Now butanone is a ketone with four carbons in the chain, so therefore you'll get a secondary alcohol with four carbons. And because the C double bond O in butanone is on carbon 2, the OH group in the alcohol will be on carbon 2. So butantuol will be the name of the alcohol that's formed and butantuol has a CH3 attached to a carbon next to an OH group and a hydrogen, and then a CH2 and a CH3 attached to that. So here's question three, our last practice question. Once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So in question three, we have a component of eucalyptus oil, which is a ketone. And when it reacts with reagent X, the C double bond O in this ketone is removed and we end up having an alcohol being produced. Now it's asking you to state the name of reagent X. So if we have a ketone and it's changing to an alcohol, reduction must have taken place and therefore reagent X is a reducing agent and they'll accept either sodium borohydride, NaBH4, which is carried out in water, or lithium aluminium hydride, the more powerful reducing agent, LiAlH4, which is carried out in dry ether. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now understand that aldehydes can be oxidized to form carboxylic acids, while ketones are resistant to oxidation, you should be aware that aldehydes can be reduced to form primary alcohols and ketones can be reduced to form secondary alcohols. And finally, you should be able to name oxidizing and reducing agents and be able to draw the structural formulae of the products that form in these reactions. So that concludes our video. Please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, and our Twitter site, which contains lots of chemistry information and links, at Radichemistry.